Hi, I'm Amethyst, and this is Ask an Autistic Rapid Fire Edition, where I answer your questions. First question. So, I recently discovered that I'm autistic, and I'm so relieved to have a name for all the things that made me odd and different. Not to mention the relief that comes with knowing I'm not stupid because some things slip right out of my grasp. And despite how excited I was to tell my friends about this, so that they could at least be aware of how much they don't understand about me, I'm finding that no one wants to accept it because I'm clearly not autistic. This is a hard situation to be in. On the one hand, you're so happy and excited to finally know why you are the way you are, and to know that your brain isn't wrong or broken, it's just different. On the other hand, most people have a pretty narrow definition of what autism is, and this is largely thanks to the media's inaccurate, at best, depictions of autistic characters. Your friends may have a picture of what they think autism looks like in their mind, or they may even have an autistic family member, and because you don't act exactly like that all the time, they don't believe that you're autistic. Never mind that autism presents differently in every single autistic person. I have two suggestions for you. First is to show your friends something like the Asperger's checklist or a list of the traits and symptoms associated with autism spectrum disorder. And maybe go through the list and I'm sure that as you go through they'll say, hey, this sounds like you, and this, and that. You can even take a list of autistic traits and take out all the references to the word autism or autistic. You can then show your friend the printed off page and ask, hey, do you, do you think this sounds like me? And then when they agree that it does, you can show them where you got the information from. The second suggestion is kind of pricey and takes a lot more time and energy, but it is um, pursuing an official autism diagnosis. It can be out of some people's reach, and I know it's not feasible for everyone, but if you can somehow work it, or if you feel motivated to, to get an autism diagnosis, having it not only allows you to have accommodations in work and at school, but also to have some weight and leverage in conversations with your friends. Second question. Do you have any food issues? How can I help expand my child's food selections? Some days he seems really hungry, and at other times there is no appetite present. Any direction would be appreciated. Eating and autism, it is a tricky subject. I know some people who their food sensitivities are so severe they can only eat three or four foods, and these are adults. So trying to get a child to eat things is even harder. When it comes to autistic people, we often, if not always, have sensory sensitivities. And I find that the biggest issue that many autistic children have with food is actually the texture. So, for example, you can make a list of the things that you know that your son does eat, and, and just take a look at what these things have in common. When I was a child, I really liked anything plain and with a dry texture, and anything with a wet or moist texture I couldn't stand. So I ate a lot of things like crackers and plain bread and really, really dry chicken with nothing else on it. If your child loves things like chicken nuggets and tater tots, he could be enjoying the crunchy or crispy outside. And as I suggested to another parent, if this is the case, you might be able to try taking vegetables like cauliflower or carrots that don't have a very strong taste and then battering them and baking them, which is, you know, healthier than frying. And in that way, you can start to introduce some new and more healthy foods into your child's diet while giving him the texture that he prefers and craves. Also, if your child seems very hungry one day and not very hungry the next, that could just be normal childhood. Because you know, there are lots of kids who get really into what they're doing and then they don't want to go for dinner. And this is particularly true for autistic children. Also, autistic children might have issues processing the sensory input from inside themselves. So things like the urge to go to the bathroom hunger or thirst might be misinterpreted or not felt by the autistic child because they're undersensitive to the things that are going on inside them. The last question is from Allie Kitten on Tumblr and they ask, I'm not autistic but I hope it's okay if I ask a question. Is stimming an autism only thing? I'm mentally ill but allistic and I do many of the things you mentioned in your stimming video. Do you know if it's called something different when it's mental illness as opposed to autism? And if so, what's the difference? Thanks. Stimming is a behavior that's seen in pretty much the entire human population. Allistic people do stim, 
just not as much, not in the same ways, and not to the same intensity as autistic people. So stimming isn't an autism only thing, and I know that stimming is seen in other developmental disorders and in mental illnesses. I think stimming is called stimming no matter what the person's neurotype, allistic or autistic. So yeah, I'd say that stimming can be present in allistic but mentally ill people. It's probably just less common and stimming is always present in autistic people. I hope that my answers were helpful to you guys and thank you for sending your questions in. If any of you have questions that you would like answered in one of my Ask an Autistic videos, Feel free to post it in the comment section or message me if you want it to be anonymous. Thank you for watching my videos!